Coming up with new ideas when it comes to making motion graphics can be really hard if you're trying to come up with ideas every single day. But if you're able to come up with systems and structures that help you come up with new ideas and apply it to all different styles can be the difference between having a day of no ideas and having a day with a bunch of great ideas that you can make animations for your clients or even just for yourself. So I went through all of my animations and I figured out what are the systems that I'm applying to them that is helping me come up with ideas as frequently as I do. And I came up with seven of them and I'm gonna reveal those to you today. Now, this first style is I'm calling kinetic animations. And really the pillar of this style is taking an object and attaching it to some type of curve. And that allows you to animate the object along the curve. You can then structure the models, the lighting and the animation around that concept to do literally whatever you wanna do. Quite often I'm making the object look like they're rolling around on other objects, creating a really satisfying animation. It's a really simple concept, but you can really kind of go crazy with it. And there's infinite variety there. Now, all of these animations that you're seeing me reference throughout this tutorial will be linked in a playlist below, as well as quite a few more to really help you come up with new ideas and really reference exactly what I'm saying so you can start learning today. Another pillar of my animations is displacement. I'm displacing all the time, but not just displacing, say, physical geometry. In this text tutorial, I was able to take text and attach it to a line, which allowed me to duplicate it down that line with all the points. Then I was able to use a noise texture to displace that line, which created the animation of the movement kind of going side to side. And of course, you can loop that seamlessly and make a really cool animation. Now, in a much more subtle way, I took the circular models that you can see in this animation and I displaced them not only to give them a variation in their shape, but also to give them a subtle amount of movement. Now, something I've done quite a bit is just kind of taken a flat plane and then displaced it and then attached objects within those points. So in this example, I again made a plane, displaced it and attached objects to them, which allowed them to have that really satisfying up and down motion, which not only allowed me to make it look really random, but also make it loop and just make it look awesome. Now, rotating objects in a 360 degree motion may seem like a no brainer, but it is one of the easiest ways to just get some movement started to really get the gears in your brain going to come up with even more interesting ideas. When I was designing this tutorial, I was really struggling on how to make those objects in the middle look interesting. What I ended up doing was rotating each of them by 360 degrees. But in this case, you can take one and rotate it by 360, and then you could say 360 times two, which would be two uh, rotations, and 360 times three, which makes them spin at different speeds, still making it a looping animation, but just giving it a really cool dynamic motion. Now, quite often, I'm taking the mapping of a texture and rotating that texture on some kind of object. In this case, I have this kind of hex pattern on a wireframe and I rotated that emissive material to kind of rotate like that and really just makes it look alive rather than just having that object there. But making that movement made all the difference. When it comes to making things loop seamlessly and look cool, 360 degree rotations is just a no brainer and always works. Procedural materials. I know they can kind of seem daunting and I avoided learning them for the longest time, but I regret doing that because there is so many opportunities to make really cool animations within procedural materials. In this example, I took a plane, used a noise texture to create some transparency so that we put a light in front of it, shine a light through that and make what you call a gobo. And that made very cool and very natural lighting effects that you can animate and create motion. In this tutorial, I was able to create a really simple sci-fi looking material on this text, which allowed animating it very easy and really just made it all the difference and it was super simple. Now we're about halfway done, so I wanna quickly let you guys know if you really like creating motion graphics similar to the stuff you're seeing right now, I have a beginner to intermediate course just in that type of stuff. It's really cool, to, it'll take you from the beginning to really feeling comfortable and knowing how to make all these different types of animations, um, all of them looping seamlessly so they're really bulletproof. I really love this course and I'm working on actually updating it right now, but you can still watch it. It still works in the current version. It's a great course. If you want to get it 25% off, I'm going to give you guys an exclusive code right now just for this video. If you want to get that course, um, let's move on. Now we're still on procedural materials. Let me show you one more tutorial here. 
So lastly, I was able to use procedural materials to create an infinite variety of patterns and shapes that added interest to this text tutorial. Really made that really cool blinking look and it's just super fun. Again, you can check out those tutorials in the description. Now, all right, corridor loops. It's a concept that's as old as this kind of motion graphics era we're in. It's been done and done, but it's just so easy to do and very just, you can just do a thousand things with it. Now the whole concept is you kind of take, in my case, a five by five area, and you populate that area with shapes, you run your camera through it, you can instance it down the line to make it look never ending, and you can do whatever you want at any objects you want. Now, in my example here, I made a cylinder, then I was able to go in geometry nodes and cut some holes into it, extrude it, add some other emissive objects, do some wireframing, and then now that I had that whole system, I was able to duplicate it down the line, set up my camera, run the camera through it, and it just looked like the corridor just never ended. So you can do that tons of times all day. And I have so many examples here on the channel of taking that concept where you have, you set up one little thing, then you instance it down the line, run your camera through it, and just have so much fun. And there's so much to learn about the different ways you can apply things to that. All right, geometry notes. If you have yet to dive into it, I strongly recommend if you're interested in motion graphics, get onto it now. It's really gonna help you. In this example, I wanted to take an organic shape. I was using metaballs to create that organic shape, but I didn't know how I was supposed to add some type of animation to it. It was really hard. Uh, but geometry nodes made it easy for me to use a noise texture to cut holes through that model, extrude it a little bit, and then I was able to animate it because I was using a noise texture to cut the holes and really made this really nice, satisfying, beautiful, organic, weird movement. It's really cool. And another example, geometry nodes made it easy to make a bunch of different cylinders, then break those up which added space for light to come in and I can put my camera through it, attach it much like the kinetic styles and make the camera go around it in a seamless loop. All right, here's the last one, simulations. I typically don't like doing simulations, they're really hard, uh, but sometimes if you just know the basics of them, they can really help you with some really cool ideas. In this example, I was just able to take a simple plane turn it into a cloth simulation, and then I was able to just watch how that cloth simulation would interact with these objects that are going around, and it made it look really, really cool. As someone who loves graphic design, being able to kind of make really weird things with the shapes of letters is always really fun. So I was able to put some objects within the shape of these this A and this Z, and then I used cloth to kind of inflate them and make it mesh and squish together, and it just looks really cool. Now lastly, I absolutely love the randomness and kind of chaos of rigid body simulations, just taking a bunch of random objects, having them collide together and just watching it animate. Then you could take that, add textures, pick your camera, pick your composition, and just have fun with that kind of chaos. So there you go, those are my systems, all seven of them, and there's even more that I'm probably forgetting, and there's more that I will come up with in the future, but these are the ones that help me come up with as many animations as I have. I've come up with hundreds in my time of just really loving motion design, and I think these will really help you. Again, check out the links in the description, check out that playlist, that's really gonna help you. If you really wanna take that deep dive into motion graphics, check out the course, feel free to use that code linked in the description and get that 25% off. Um, but I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.